Hello caffeine fiends and welcome to another coffee bean review for www.getbeaned.com I'm the mean bean machine and today we're looking at something very special so before we go any further do smash those like and subscribe buttons now we've picked up a specialty coffee from Girls Who Grind Coffee who are a roasters uh, set up by two women who have gone out of their way to source all of their coffee from female growers female coffee farmers uh, that's largely because like many industries the coffee industry is very kind of male dominated and they're trying to help kind of women in the industry uh, compete at the highest levels especially at kind of speciality coffee uh, a lot of coffee coming from kind of lesser economically developed countries uh, farming isn't kind of uh, naturally associated with kind of female growers or whatnot so it can be quite hard for uh, women to break into the industry so this roaster is kind of doing a lot to help in that sense now we've picked up this yeni esperanza coffee it even says on the bottle of coffee a special af coffee um, now why is this so special well because it uses something called the thermal shock process I have no idea what that is. Um, yeah, obviously, I know it's how the coffee is processed, but I don't know a lot about it. But apparently, it produces these really unique, really special flavours in coffees. Um, and I've heard someone say it doesn't even taste like coffee, which is bizarre to me. And surely you want your coffee tasting like coffee. But anyway, this is what I was sent. This lovely kind of 100 gram tester bottle. You could only buy it in the 100 grams. Uh, usually you buy a bag for about 250 grams that's what we usually try um, and this was 11 pounds for 100 grams you know plus you know delivery that's a lot of money so um, I'm hoping that this coffee does taste kind of something special or at least just a little bit different to kind of justify that money it is a micro lot so I do kind of accept it's going to be more expensive and I'm sort of all right with that but just as a heads up it is more expensive than your average coffee um, uh, it does come with a lovely sticker. I love when coffee companies send a sticker out with their coffee. I don't know why. I think it's a little childish thing where I'm still kind of very excited about stickers. But cool. I'm going to find a place for that later. And this little kind of information booklet which tells us about Yeni Esperanza and about the thermal shock process. So I will read that to you. We'll go over that and see what it's all about so let's have a look at this coffee first so here it's got all the details on the back Finca El Paraiso the farm it comes from country Colombia Colombia is known for good coffee um, so yeah, Colombia is it's still a massive export for the country um, and they've gone out of their way to kind of protect that industry at the moment during Covid uh, region Coca, variety Castillo, process thermal shock. This is the special process that apparently makes it taste lovely. Altitude is there as well. So, taste like. Hasn't got tasting notes, it just says taste like. Intoxicating. I argue that's not a tasting note, but a marketing point, however. Um, ripe passion fruit. Now, this is where it gets interesting. That's like a tropical fruit. It's really citrusy, it's really tropical. You don't get tasting notes like that. If this coffee tastes like passion fruit, then yeah, it genuinely is is something different because coffee does not taste like that. It should not taste that tropical, that acidic, that, you know, like passion fruit. No one else out there is labeling their coffee passion fruit. Heady jasmine. Um, so floral, but j jasmine you associate with teas and that kind of lighter taste. So it's really interesting that it's saying passion fruit, which is this really strong, punchy, acidic, tropical flavour and jasmine. I presume that's where it's heady jasmine, as in there's the strength to compete there. And heaven is that you. I mean, if it's that good, let's hope. But so largely passion fruit, jasmine. I don't know where to start with those flavours. So I'm presuming kind of really acidic and really sweet. And then jasmine kind of almost this kind of... Uh, not milky, but this the way it says heady is it suggests there'll be a kind of a, a top note to kind of cut that, that passion fruit flavor too much. This this kind of floral aftertone that just kind of cuts it down. 
is what I'm assuming. Haven't tried it yet. So that's what we've got from the bottle. Let's read about it now. So, Yeni Esperanza. Well, we could not be more excited to bring you this mind-blowing coffee from highly experimental producer Yeni Esperanza as part of the Six for Farmers coffee sourcing project by Cata Export. This project was developed to support Colombian producers who, due to COVID-19, were facing severe issues such as lack of workers, drastic reductions in demand, cancelled contracts and a lot of uncertainty. So there you go. As I mentioned earlier, the Colombian uh, kind of government and, and other, project, other people uh, trying to kind of protect this massive export for them during these uncertain times. And this has kind of arisen out of that. Yeni owns and runs Finca El Paraiso alongside her brother Diego Samuel, a coffee farm which is very well known in the speciality coffee world because of its extraordinary coffees and experimental fermentation techniques. And this thermal shock process micro locked from Yeni is a prime example of this. Um, I've not particularly heard of that farm, but that's, that's just a, an aside. Uh, Yeni is in charge of the farm and manages the entire production with her female team, in addition to working with neighbouring female producers. Her interest in research into process experimentation has helped build Finca Proiso's great success. So, they're, they're kind of bigging up the farm, bigging up the coffee. So, what is the thermal shock process? So, this is the process in which the beans are kind of harvested and, and you know, that flavour is brought out. So, uh, the thermal shock process is an unusual and complex post-harvest process method that involves using water at specific temperatures throughout various stages. This creates an incredibly unique cup profile that was sure is going to blow your mind. I'm sure that's just marketing like, oh, this coffee will blow your mind, but they've really bigged it up now, so I'm really hoping for something special. So the process. One, harvesting 95% ripe cherry to... Sorry, 95% ripe cherries and 5% red cherries. So the red cherries are the semi-ripe cherries, not quite ready. Um, uh, two, wash the cherry with ozonated water to remove microbes. So for those not in the know, ozonated water is where water where ozone has been put in. Ozone is O3, so it's a form of oxygen. It's a very kind of pure form of oxygen and it destroys microbes. So it's a way of kind of purifying the water without putting something else in. Um, so, I mean, you put oxygen in, but you know, a, a chemical or, or something to remove the microbes. Uh, so yeah, it's just highly oxygenated water. Uh, three, first phase of anaerobic cherry fermentation for 48 hours in tanks with pressure relief valve at a temperature of 18 degrees centigrade. So anaerobic cherry fermentation is without oxygen. So it's really interesting that they've put oxygen into the water and then they go through a process without oxygen. They starve the cherries of oxygen then. Uh, four, depulp. So that's where you take the flesh off the cherries. Um, now a coffee bean is actually the seed of a coffee cherry. So it's surrounded by that kind of red flesh. Um, and depulping is taking it off. Five, fermentation second phase, anaerobic, anaerobic mucilage for 48 hours at 21 degrees Celsius. So mucilage is, it's like a sticky viscous layer that come that is below the the, the flesh um, and you leave that on and you ferment it uh, because it you know it reacts with the oils draws out the oils so you leave that on again anaerobics are no oxygen uh, for 48 hours and at number six wash with thermal shock in order to transfer and fix the aroma so I still don't know what thermal shock is it just says washed with thermal shock firstly water at 40 degrees then water at 12 degrees Ah, right, okay. So water at 40 degrees and water at 12 degrees. Very interesting, very specific about that. Seven, controlled drying for 34 hours with air recirculation at one temperature of 35 degrees Celsius and relative humidity of 25% until a moisture content between 10% and 11% is achieved. Now that's interesting because a lot of people who dry their coffee just lie them on beds and let them air dry. This seems very kind of controlled. So. I have no idea how this is going to taste or how this is going to work out. I don't know what brewing method is best. I'm going to try it as an espresso initially and then maybe move on to my typical kind of oat latte. 
Uh, depending on how I feel, I might mix up that brew method. And we'll see what flavor profiles I can pick up, how I react to this coffee. I'm hoping for something special. I'm sort of expecting, honestly, nothing to kind of blow me away. Because, uh, like everything else, coffee is coffee at the end of the day. So I'm not expecting something to really be like, oh wow, I've never tasted that before. However, I'm open-minded. Let's see what happens. There's my espresso shot for it, as you can see. Crema's uh, kind of dissipated a little bit, but it's come out with really thick yellowy crema, which is very exciting, very creamy, very oily. One thing I will say from initial kind of just smelling it is there is a really lovely fruity smell, which has caught me off guard because coffee just doesn't smell like it. It still smells like coffee, but there is this kind of overtone of, wow, that tropical fruity smell is there, which is really interesting. So I'm quite excited to give it a taste and see how it goes down. So here goes. I mean that smell, wow. Oh wow, I mean, yep. Yeah. First things first, that passion fruit flavor is, is there. That is really sweet. That's really lovely, really sweet. Um, it's not like a fruit juice. There's no sharpness to it. There's no like, oh, um, that's really kind of sweet and, and you know, bites at the tongue. But that, that flavour is there. Um, the heady jasmine is, is, as I sort of expected, you're not tasting jasmine, but there is something that kind of, again, tempers that so there isn't a sharpness. And I think that's what they mean by that kind of heady jasmine. Um, you're not tasting jasmine. You're there. There, there is an almost, uh, almost a kind of minty, floral, uh, herby kind of thing preventing the the full sharpness of the the passion fruit. Yeah? Um, but wow, I'm really, really struck by how much that does taste. That, how fruity that tastes for a coffee. That is really impressive. And to be honest, as an espresso, that is glorious. I would drink that as a black coffee. That is a lovely coffee, like a really lovely coffee. I would have that as a long black. I mean, well, I almost don't want to try it with milk. I will, I will try as an espresso, uh, as a latte with oat milk. I'm not expecting it to be great because it's tempering that kind of that tropical acidic fruity flavor with oat milk which seems bizarre we'll give it a go but as a as an espresso wow that fruitiness is almost there it almost it all i understand when i now understand that it's like oh it almost doesn't taste like coffee at all it's definitely coffee but wow it is a bizarrely tropical <laughs> which is just not what you expect from coffee at all and that is impressive that it is so different we'll give it a try as a latte i'll give my final thoughts in a second but wow i am genuinely blown away so all credit to their marketing it's bang on here it is as an oat latte um not a lot of distinction between the head and the body there um but it's got this kind of nice mild kind of honey texture to it Extra colour. Um, we'll give it a go. I'm not expecting big things, is it, from a milky drink? Um, just because it was so impressive and really fruity as a as a hot, as a black or as an espresso. So um, you know, I'm prepared to be surprised again, but I'm not expecting. Ooh. Interesting that with the milk, that kind of that heady jasmine, that 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 almost that thing that's kind of tempering it is almost gone, but the milk replaces that. So the fruitiness still comes through, um, but it's not like unpleasant, like putting a citrus fruit with milk. It's not, you know, like 
a kind of horrible curdle flavour is there is it's just kind of this sweetness comes through and it's it's it's, it's not unpleasant, it's just not what I expect from a milky drink. That being said, full, full disclosure, I buy coffees that say chocolatey or caramelly or things that I would feel naturally complement milk. Yeah, uh, you know, those kind of sweets that have milk in them or, you know, those flavour profiles anyway. Um, but this isn't bad at all. It's just different. I don't actually on second thought there's a richness that the milk brings out um, so there is less what's interesting is that it bigs up this passion fruit a vibe and I'm not getting a lot of acidity although you get the real sweetness there's no sharpness and there's no bite and there's not you know you don't go oh that's acidic Despite getting that flavour, um, it's quite hard to explain, but it does work as a milky drink. And it does offer a really kind of different perspective on coffee. At the end of the day, yes, you are still going to go, ultimately that's coffee, but it is a different flavour. And if you do notice flavour profiles in your coffee, you are going to go, oh wow, that is different. Um, and I'm genuinely impressed at how different that is and at how pleasant it is. It's a lovely coffee. It's a lovely sweet coffee.